It has never been a secret that my preferred Olympus camera and lens is the OMD EM1 Mark II armed with the 12 to 100 Pro lens. With this combination, I hardly need anything else except perhaps my lunch. I am the proud owner of a bus pass and use Shanks's pony for exploring open countryside. Most of my landscape and architectural work is adequately covered by the eight and a half times zoom that this lens offers. It is f4 constant aperture and that can be a great help and it has image stabilization that can be used with the camera's stabilizer. I don't lock myself into procedures that I cannot get out of, such as filters. Whilst, uh, yes, certain settings are mandatory, I don't see the point of doing something in camera that cannot be done in post-production that can be changed if things don't work out. The artistic process does not stand still. Now, I find that what I do today could be out of date by tomorrow. Remember, less is more, and sophisticated image stabilizers in a camera and lens does reduce the amount of gear required, and Lightroom allows me to change my fickle mind. In 2020, we have the additional problem that we cannot backtrack from COVID-19. I regard myself more vulnerable and therefore my working routine has changed. Having a vast library of UK views, something close to 100,000, YouTube has been my knight in shining armour, but it hasn't stopped me from taking new pictures, albeit in a more localised geographical area. Now, this is what this program celebrates in these very dark times. In January, we had no idea, well, I didn't, what was about to hit us out of the blue. All was beautiful, nice and fresh, even in the freezing depths of winter. In early March, I went to Lincolnshire and had a wonderful, carefree time. Two days later, I returned to King's Cross Station on one of LNER's swish new trains in utter bliss and fulfilled. But all was about to change. I haven't travelled first class since, or had one of their meals with wine on the move, which is half the fun. There will be none of this for the foreseeable future. You have asked me to add metadata on my more technical programs, to some of the photographs anyway, not all of them, and I will make additional comments. Also, you will see that I'm not afraid of using, yes, program, sometimes mistaken for auto. It's quite different. On program, you can add most of your personal settings, and if your camera has program plus shift, you can override, yes, override the shutter speeds and apertures selected by the camera. I will commence with Lincoln Cathedral. First, the shutter speed. Yes, that is accurate, a third of a second. And you won't believe me, will you, that it was handheld. Both camera and lens have image stabilizers, permitting handheld images thought impossible a few years ago and by some photographers today who refuse to believe me. Time to get up to date, folks. Another handheld shot taken inside the cathedral, and a couple in the Victorian prison at the castle uses the same technique. It's called holding your breath, by the way. The dummies are very lifelike, especially from the rear. I ended up addressing one of them before I realised they weren't for real. Oh dear, that was embarrassing. I enjoyed my stay at Louth. I stayed for two nights, very cheaply, incidentally. 
The shops were very busy because, I am told, there are no out-of-town shopping centres. And oh boy, does it show. My research, conducted from home first, steered me towards the church as Simon Jenkins gives it four stars, so a visit was a must. Balancing the exposure for this huge window with a much darker interior needed care for exposure. I spot metered near the window, allowing the interior, the general interior, to be underexposed, correcting both highlights and shadows in post production. Had to be careful about noise. So, have I got away with it? The surrounding Lincolnshire landscape is a different challenge. It doesn't fall easily into place, like, say, the Lake District or Snowdonia. I used those lines in the soil, courtesy of an obliging farmer, to lead the eye to Louth Church. But, as I cropped to 16 times 9 from 4 by 3 for YouTube, that helps to make a bit more sense out of the composition. Atmospheric light would have been better, but you can't have it your way the whole time, can you? So this will do for a chance visit, and it is certainly better than a dull day. By the time I had returned to Louth, there was a sunset coming behind the church. There is an enormous difference between the exposure of the sky, which of course is much brighter, and the street. And as I was hand-holding from the middle of a busy street, I had to quickly spot meter the sky. Restoring some detail back to the street needed a lot of care in Adobe Latrum, where I felt sandwiched between noise and blown-out highlights. I always wanted to visit Mablethorpe. For some reason, sometimes the butt of jokes. I enjoyed the wide, expansive beaches, and like much in the county, you have to take extra care about composition. But the light could have been more exciting. But then, that is the challenge, to make something of it when you have to be there. But whether this little cameo was a humorous reflection on the place, I don't know, but it was worth a shot, and not just on the iPhone. Different challenges soon arrived in the shape of lockdown. Although relaxed later, at first, we were advised to take exercise for no more than one hour. For my YouTube channel, I produced one-hour walkies, areas from home that I could visit, and a link is at the top of this screen. I indulged in a few close-ups, but I felt more at home on my local common. The photographic challenge stipulated by strong sunlight was not to end up with shadows having no detail or highlights overexposed. These have been corrected in Lightroom. And you know, it is amazing the number of images I see elsewhere where well, this has not been done. Surely digital photography means that you work with computers and software, something we could not do with film, so why ignore it? When government guidance was relaxed, the National Trust opened some of their properties. Social distancing was beneficial for photography, otherwise it was back to close-ups and controlling depth of field helped by traditional techniques such as knowledge of apertures and lenses beyond their obvious use. Afterwards, I walked to East Grinstead, 
Normally a busy town, but social distancing again was a great help. English Heritage also opened up some of their properties to pre-booked visits. Again, helped by the lack of visitors, I could indulge in creative shots, particularly for views of high contrast, demanding a bit more time. Later, I walked with my photographic companion, Richard, to the beach, but I sneaked in this one without him noticing. Like Lincolnshire, Epsom Downs in Surrey is an open landscape, but now we are about, what, 500 feet up on the North Downs. This shot of the grandstand on the racecourse, home of the Derby and Oaks, I was fortunate in capturing this brief splash of sunlight when everything else was in shadow, but I had to work very quickly. I was really making four Langley Vale woods. Here tucked away with no publicity are several stone statues commemorating a visit by Lord Kitchener during the First World War. I discovered that Arundel Castle in West Sussex, seat of the Duke of Norfolk, was open for business allowing admission to the rooms but with strict social distancing. Again, the lack of people helped photography, but no tripods. All handheld, no choice. Here is the metadata, which will probably give some of you a heart attack, except, of course, Olympus photographers. I can hardly get into my study, now my quarantine room for books. Most are unread, as I use them for research, and that is how I discovered St. Michael and All angels, a stone's throw from Croydon bus station. First I consulted their website. It was open at a certain time, so I emailed the clergy, and thankfully permission was granted for a photo visit. They were very helpful, but it serves to remind us that we just simply cannot turn up expecting a church to bow to our high demands. From the sidelines, I have witnessed this, and believe you me, it's quite a sideshow, as the excuses given are often pathetic and, of course, all rejected. Note the shutter speeds again. Afterwards, I popped up to Addington Hills for the view over Croydon into the city, and quite by chance managed to arrive when the light behind one of the Crystal Palace masts was rather interesting. My last tour in the locality was from home to Reigate and Collie Hills over the North Downs when the autumn tints were at their best and again I was lucky with weather. This was early November, but after a bit of rummaging around in my study, sorry, quarantine room, I discovered that I possessed an E.M. 10 equipped with a pancake lens. Now, this is the entry-level camera into the OMD range and is much cheaper than my professional EM-1. Nevertheless, I decided to use it for the next month, and the resulting YouTube has just been released, and I have added a link at the top of the screen. Wherever you live in the UK and possibly elsewhere, lockdown in some shape or form is with us for some time. And unfortunately, as I am a bus pass holder, I consider myself more vulnerable. In fact, a walk in the open countryside is the safest place, with most forms of transport, if permitted, not a good idea. I have realized that virtual tours on YouTube and other platforms are very much in fashion. 
Over the years and long before COVID-19 struck, I produced 38 UK photo tours and 28 photo walks. I have therefore highlighted them on my YouTube channel and webpage, and the link is displayed above. Happy viewing and cheerio for now. Happy New Year.